Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Hangar 14. In this episode we'll be looking at the control installation of the Explorer and Safari aircraft. As you guys can hear there's a bit of background noise. Uh, we are at the KFA factory and I'm just going to run through the installation procedure for a Safari behind me. Uh, the Explorer and Safari procedures are identical so I hope you guys find this useful. Okay, so in this video I will not be explaining exactly how to assemble the control column housing and, and the control sticks. It's uh, reasonably well explained in the manual. The same goes for the mixer at the back. So I'm going to assume that you've already assembled the mixer and you've assembled the basic control column and we're going to move from there. Right, so step one, we're going to level the fuselage. Uh, the means of leveling is using the front and rear spar carry through as your uh, leveling means. Uh, just uh, take a spirit level, put it on top front to back and make sure it's level. Right, so you, you've installed your floorboards. Uh, your next step would be then the control column and the rudder pedals. The rudder pedals can be done later, you don't have to do it now. Very important is that the bell crank is at a 90 degree angle or parallel to the um, bungee truss. Uh, just make sure the stick is upright and this is parallel. Don't, do not connect this tube. We've installed the control column. We've got the bell crank parallel to the bungee truss. And as you can see, we made a, a little plan here just to use a ruler and keep the bell crank up against it. And it just makes it easier to work and it's also parallel. I think the thickness of this is about 2 millimeter, maybe 2.5 millimeter. Um, the next step is if you've installed the uh, mixer in the back. So now we're going to connect the flap handle and the mixer. Now the mixer needs to be at 11 degrees trailing edge down. So I'll show you guys now how to do that. It's very important that it's at 11 degrees. It can be 10.5 and 11.5 but if it's 11 your controls will be perfect. Your next step is going to be to adjust the push rod that runs from the flap handle to the mixer to 11 degrees that the mixer is 11 degrees uh, trailing edge down. So this is approximately what it should be. Then your next step uh, hang a plumb line from the center of this bolt down to get the center of this hole and this will give you a symmetrical uh, line around the hinge uh, front and back for the for the horns okay. right so with this uh, pointing straight down as I explained and this one the, the front bell crank locked we are going to adjust this s-shaped push rod to fit exactly in the third hole from the outside or the second hole from the inside. Okay, so moving to the elevator. Uh, we would like this bolt hole to be at a 90 degree angle to the floor. When you do that, the control column will work out to approximately 5 degrees forward. So the stick will be a little bit forward. This is to give you enough room when you are full up elevator that it doesn't hit the pilot in the stomach. You're going to adjust the control column so the control stick is approximately five degrees forward. Uh, if you use the floor as your reference, it can be anything from five to seven degrees. So it normally works out to about five degrees. So once you've measured the five degrees, you can use this side here as a reference. Um, this bolt should be at a 90, 90 degree angle to the floor. If you draw a line straight down and then on the floor. All right guys, just a quick recap. So we've leveled the fuselage. The control column is in. The bell crank, aileron bell crank is parallel to the bungee truss. The mixer is 11 degrees trailing edge down. You do that by adjusting the push rod from the flap handle. The flap handle has got a, a stop in. Then uh, we do the S-shaped push rod and it goes into the second hole, the second hole from the inside or the third hole from the outside of the plane. And now we're going to move to the next step where we're going to be setting up the elevator. Next one, uh, you've got this now at the five degree forward angle approximately. This is about 90 degrees to the floor. 
Now you're going to install this push rod going to the idler at the back. The idler doesn't have a specific position. Okay, so the push rod for the elevator, the one that will connect to the idler arm, is approximately 738 millimeters from center to center. So moving to the elevator, so we've installed the elevator and tailplane on the back of the plane. Elevator is nice and level and square to the post. And also you've leveled your fuselage and you check that this is level, the spar. So next step, we clamp the elevator in the neutral position. And the elevator here is approximately in the middle. So with the, with the elevator and tailplane locked, the control column locked in position five degrees forward that one is approximately 738 millimeters to the idler then we are going to measure the distance from the bolt at the idler to the horn at the back of the elevator okay so the distance approximately uh, from the idler to the horn is 3,318 approximately millimeters. Aluminium push rod comes pre-cut from KFA. It's, a, it's at a certain determined length. The way that you will adjust the length is by sliding the end fittings in and out. Leave enough thread for your rod ends, so don't go more than four or five threads out. Make sure there's enough meat in there to carry the loads. So your next step will be to install your rudder cable. Uh, as you can see here, we just pushed a tube through the rudder pedals to keep them upright. They are a little bit uh, towards the pilot. It will give you enough room for your brakes. So you do that by pushing the rod through and then on the front of this V-brace. And we lock them in place. Then we're gonna go to the rudder. And the rudder, we're gonna do the same as with the elevator we are going to clamp the rudder and then pull the cables through and we're going to start on in the front we're going to put the thimbles on and all the bushes and everything pull it to the back and then we're going to cut the rudder cable in the back once we've looped it through the thimbles and the nyco press sleeves